Hi there everyone, my name is Priyaj Thani. I'm one of the third year residents in internal medicine here at Stanford. And today I wanted to go over specialty specific data regarding the most recent match, the 2024 match. And specifically today we're gonna to be talking about dermatology. In this video, I'll go over the average step 2CK score for dermatology residents who matched. I'm gonna go over how to stand out. And then I'm also gonna go over research and how important that was to dermatology. You'll see that the video's sources are right here. I'm gonna be talking about three populations of applicants today, the MD seniors, which are people involved in an MD institution, DO seniors, people involved at a DO institution, and then ultimately I'm also going to talk about IMGs. They're going to be grouped together, both US and non-US, under the foreign trained physicians. Before I get started, it's very important to understand how competitive dermatology was as a field within the United States. There were 576 positions that were offered total, so you'll see that number right here you'll see that 916 people applied for 576 positions. So just off the bat, you know that the about average match rate was around six out of nine, which is around essentially um, 66%. You'll see that if you now break these people down based on the type of applicant they were, you'll see that of the USMD seniors, 424 people matched out of 601, which is a 70% match rate. For USDO seniors, 40 people matched out of 85, and eight people matched out of 22 for IMGs in US IMGs and then non-US IMGs 11 out of 31. You'll notice that if you add up all of these together, the 601, 85, 22, and 31, that doesn't add up to 916. And the reason for that is you're missing a few other types of applicants here, such as USMD people who are not seniors. So they maybe they applied to dermatology after having taken a few years off of medical school. Similarly, we're also missing Canadians here and we're also missing DO, um, DO um, people who have graduated from medical school, took some time off, and then applied to residency. But regardless, notice that there is a big discrepancy. USMDs had a 70% match rate, DOs had a 57% match rate, USIMGs had a 36% match rate, and non-USIMGs had around a 35.4% match rate. You'll notice that the USIMGs, because there were such few of them, there was only 8 out of 22, um, there was such few numbers that match that their data was actually not included. But here's what I'm going to go over. For each of these different types of populations, for the MD seniors, the USMD seniors who were matched and unmatched, then the DO seniors that were matched and unmatched, and then the non-US IMGs that were matched and unmatched, I'm going to go over all of these different types of things. I'm going to go over the average step 2CK score, research, the number of pubs they had, the percent that were from um, prestigious med schools, and then the number of ranks they had on their rank list, the percent that were in AOA, and the percent that had another graduate degree. Let's start with the first thing, the Step 2 CK score. You'll see that the Step 2 CK score for USMD seniors that match was 257 compared to 250 for USMD seniors that did not match. You'll notice that, again, the number of people in each of these include, is included right here. And you'll notice that the number of people is not exactly the same as the number of people mentioned here. And the reason for that is because there's certain people who allow their data to be used and certain people don't allow their data to be used. But regardless, notice that the Step 2 CK score on average across these specialties for people who match was around a 250. For USMD seniors, it was 257. For USDO seniors that matched, it was 250. For US IMGs that, um, for non-US IMGs that matched, it was 256 compared to 245. Now I'm going to go into the number of research experiences. Again, research experiences is just the number. This isn't number of publications, but it's like if you worked in a lab, for example, that's one research experience. Even if the lab gave you 15 publications, that's still one research experience. So you'll see that the USMD seniors that matched, they had 6.4 research experiences compared to 4.9. But then you'll also see that the USDO seniors who matched had 4.5 compared to 5.4 for those who did not match. So here, I don't think number of research experience correlates more to matching because there's not that much of a difference. Whereas here, you'll notice that the score, uh, step 2C score is almost always higher in those who match compared to those who didn't match, which implies that there is somewhat of a correlation here. But now here's where things really go out a little crazy. The number of abstracts, publications, and posters, there is a difference between those who match and those who did not match. If you were a USMD senior and you matched, you had an average of 27.7 .7 abstracts, publications, and posters compared to 19 if you did not match. Similarly, USDO seniors who match had an average of 15.4 compared to 11.8 to those who did not match. The non-US IMGs who matched had 28.5 compared to 7.2. Whether or not this is a good thing, I don't necessarily want to comment on it, but it clearly means that people who are matching have more abstracts, publications, and posters than those who are not matching just purely based on this data. 
that in and of itself is kind of concerning because you don't want people to be doing research just for the sake of doing it, right? Like you, they, you, you should be doing it because you're interested in it, not just because you want to get more numbers. But that's kind of what this data is implying. People have 28.5 abstracts, publications, and posters, um, and they're matching compared to people who are not matching who have fewer. I don't think these people who are not matching are not as good as these people, but it's just odd that that's kind of where it's what it's implying. Now, let's talk about this new thing, which is the percent of people from top 40 medical schools based on NIH funding. And you'll see that DO schools don't fall into this because most DO schools don't have much NIH funding just purely because they're newer to the game. Similarly, US IMGs can't get um, non-US IMGs and um, US IMGs can't get NIH funding because they're not within the US. So you'll see that 41.7% of the people who matched among MD seniors tend to be from top 40 medical schools, but 23% of the people who did not match from the US MD senior pool were also from top 40 medical schools. Clearly, prestige does play a role in, in um, getting into a dermatology specialty, and of course, it's not the same. It's not the whole picture. Now, here's where the real... Um, rubber means the road, the number of ranks. So what I'm talking about here is the number of ranks that you list on your rank list. The people who matched listed on average about nine different ranks compared to people who did not match listed only five. Usually the number of places that you rank is directly correlated with the number of places that you interview because you can't list places on your rank list that you did not interview at. So you'll see that the people who matched on average interviewed at around nine places compared to 4.5 of US seniors who did not match. Similarly, Similarly, USDO seniors who matched averaged about 7.4 compared to 3.6 that did not match. And non-US IMGs averaged about 3.9 compared to 3.7 who did not match. The whole point here is that the more places you interview and the more places you have listed on your rank list, the more likely you are to actually uh, match. Now we'll talk about AOA. The AOA is basically an honor society in medical school. Specifically, it tends to be in MD medical schools and it's limited to the top X percent of the class. I think it's 10 to 15%. My medical school did not have it, but I know some medical schools do and they use it as a filter. And you'll notice that the, of the USMD seniors who matched, 41.1% were in AOA, but that doesn't mean that you have to be in AOA to match because that also means that 60% of the people who matched into dermatology from MD seniors did not have AOA. Notice that there's no AOA data for DO schools and US IMGs and non-US IMGs because they don't have it. And the last one is individuals with a different graduate degree. The whole point I'm trying to show you here is that just because you have an extra degree does not mean you're more likely to match into dermatology because you'll notice that the about both both of the people who matched and did not match have about the same percentage of individuals with another degree, 17%, 33%, 38%, and 33% and 36%. So hopefully this provides you more of an insight. You can figure out where you stand in each of these. If you're a DO senior, you can see that the average score tends to be 250. The number of pubs tends to be 15.4. You can also see the number of ranks you need to have, the number of interviews. If you're an MD student, this is the kind of stuff that you're looking at. And then non-US IMGs and US IMGs are both listed here as well. So hopefully this provided more insight into the dermatology match. If you appreciated this video, please drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.